What's going on everyone? Uh, today I got a special treat. Uh, it's the release of the latest project that I have been working on. It is Dynamic Movement Trays for Tabletop Simulator. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, let's get started. How to find the workspace. Uh, so we'll go ahead and create a single player game and by default you'll get this launch screen so you want to click on the workspace icon come up here and click on the browse button you'll get the search menu here and you come over here and you click on kev basis and it'll show up right here it'll be the only uh, op workspace that is found now if you can't remember kev basis just type dynamic Movement, Oops. movement trace. And you'll get all sorts of movement trays. Uh, second option will be the one we're looking for. Scroll down and uh, for you, the button will say subscribe. For me, I'm already subscribed. So go ahead and click that button. Close out of this, hit the escape button. And now you'll go back to the screen. <clears throat> so you're gonna select the Kev bases, hit the load button. And there you have it. Okay, so what you'll have here is this nice little backdrop uh, and one single base and three README files. The README, uh, the first README is pretty much just telling you there's two README's, uh, one with the instructions, another one on how to change the base size. Uh, this is in case you have uh, like the Beastard Army that I have. Uh, by default, the, the the base is 25 by 25, and and. <laughs> the base Beastard Army has many different base sizes, like 20 millimeters, uh, 40 by 40, 50 by 50, 50 by 75, and then you know, of course, if you don't play Beastards and you have another army like the like the dwarves, then you could use a 20 by 20. This is kind of what the instructions will cover here. Uh, but let's let's start by going ahead and zooming in to our worship space. Well. And uh, so in the instructions, one and two pretty much just cover what the buttons do. And so if you notice when I hover over, four buttons are created. There's two blues and two yellows. The blues represent increasing the rank and file and the yellows are decreasing the rank and files. And since we're on a one by one, clicking the yellows does nothing. Okay, but if I wanted to create say a three by two, then I go ahead and click on the blue twice. And that's gonna give me three files and then if I click on this guy, it's going to give me three, one rank, so I got a three by two. All right, hands down, the most exciting feature of the dynamic movement trays is that they automatically generate rotating pivot points as you change the base size. I think that's so exciting. Here, let me show you. Uh, if you go, let me go in, you know, select those pivot points, you'll see that it automatically generates the pivot points for you. And it generates it so that your the models are facing forward um, in the same direction, um, all uniformly. And so if you recall in the past tutorials, I talked about methods in how to accurately drop these pivot points um, so that it, you know, you know, I'll admit, uh, so it'll, it'll avoid cases where you don't have the pivot points misaligned and I'll admit when I was creating these, these bases, especially when they were pretty large, um, you know, models um, or bases that you know, would have a lot of models on them, I'd start getting a little, a little bit sloppy towards the end just because it was a hassle to actually drop a pivot point and turn it in the direction that you wanted it. So the nice thing here is you don't have to worry about that. It automatically generates it for you in the right location. And let's let's uh, demo that real quick. Uh, so come over here to the research units, grab one of my models, and we'll go ahead, since it's a three by two, I'll create three models. Highlight them all. Hit the number two button to give them, you know, somewhat organized and just drop them on and they snap in. Oops, that was a four byte. So no worries, go ahead and highlight everything. Notice how the base is highlighted. Make sure you hit the control button. Deselect the base, move the models out. We'll go ahead and copy two more. Nice. 
All right, so I don't know about you, but uh, I'm quite undecisive when it comes to movement. I think movement is one of the key aspects of the game. And uh, I've always found that Tabletop Simulator didn't have a really good mechanism for marking um, the location or an easy way. You'd have to resort to dropping, you know, like a token next to it and, and use that as a marking. And the problem was with pivot points, sometimes they kind of snap like a magnet and now it makes it hard for you to, 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 to align. Uh, so what I started doing, so what you, I, the way I've solved this problem is by adding what I call a movement uh, marker. And essentially you right click on the base and it's the very first menu, it's called Mark Location On. So if you turn it on, it actually marks the location. You'll see that it creates a, a triangle, and in this case it's a white triangle, that's the width of the base. So this allows you to easily be, um, you know, in case you move it, you're, you're able to find the location, um, you know, start and finish of where you where you faced, where you initially started. So if you move out of it, um, you can move back, and you'll know how to reposition yourself. Uh, a couple things about this color: the color is based on the color of the player. In this particular case, uh, if, I, if I go to change colors, I happen to be white. And so the color was white, but if I say I want to go pink, come back over here, um, go ahead and, and deselect it. It's, it's white just because uh, it was created when I was a white player. But now if I go ahead and click mark locations, you'll see that it turns pink. Uh, and this is super helpful, especially when you have a lot of models out on the tabletop. And sometimes you might not know who's, who. you know, sometimes they get left around and you might not know whose marker that is. This is a nice quick way of you uh, knowing who that marker pertains to. And also you'll notice that when you create this movement tray, um, I'm sorry, I gotta highlight the, the base. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't interfere. And then when you're done, you go ahead and just take it off and it disappears. During the recording, I kind of joked about different um, armies having different base sides, but uh, the truth is the Beast Herd army alone has different base sizes. Here are some of the units that um, exist. And I think there's even more differentiating base sizes out there. Here's an example of, of a good set of mixture here between 20 millimeters, 25, uh, 25 by 50, 40, 50 by 50, and 50 by 75. And then I got one here without bases. And it's a bonus as to how it looks like without any bases. Um, all right, so we come over here. Uh, what I recommend uh, you do is start by renaming this guy. Uh, he's called Kev All. So what we want to do to is come over here and type 20 by 20 millimeters. And come up here to modeling and select the, the scripting option. And you'll see that it renames it. Come down here and ch where it says 25 by 25. This is the only line you need to change. Uh, and it's important, you know, it's syntax to so make sure you don't add extra characters. Only put numbers right here just to play it safe. Uh, comments are dash dash, but let's just play it safe if you're not comfortable with coding. Make sure you only add digits and nothing else from 0 through 9 and no decimals as well. Okay, so go ahead and close it. Do a right click and we do a clone and bring it down here. Hit the escape button and Right click it and here where we hit the reset settings and you'll see that it made it a little bit smaller. <clears throat> and now we can actually increment it. We'll do a three by two since that's kind of what we've been doing so far. And let's go over here and, and clone. So come over here and go one, two, three. One, two, three. You can see they kind of just all drop right in here. Uh, one of the tricks I like to do is, you know, Select everything. Now we want a 25 by 50, so I come right click over here. <coughs> Change that to 25 by 50. Come up here to the modeling, go to scripting, look for the 25 by 50, and here it is. So we change this to 25, change this to 50. Right click, clone, create a new one, 
right click and click reset base and there it is so uh, we'll do a two by two just to make sure that we can we we'll do it over here and then we do a clone okay uh, now we got the minotaur over here um, change this guy we're gonna go 40 by 40 okay come over here to the modeling scripting and uh, change this to 40 40 go clone bring this down here Right click and reset. Over here, and we'll do a two by two. So I like to run my miniatures. So sometimes, <clears throat> so we do a clone, drop, drop, drop. Three by three. Come over here and show you. I want to show you. Here, how it looks like without any any bait. All right, here we go. There you go. And so now you have your full uh, army based up. Um, you come down here and you can, you know, change the base size any, any way you want. markings disable them once you once you you know establish that this is perfectly placed yeah you don't really need to create bases on your units you can actually just kind of use the default size uh, so you got this double stack look and at least you got these lines here to separate in case that's important to you but most of the time it's not we, we kind of know uh, it's not you know when we've been playing for a while we kind of know how to line them up and how many models uh, based on the 50 would you know if you like this video make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get more content if you like the workshop or even want to download it make sure you you go to uh, steam's workshop download it follow the directions in the video I'm definitely looking forward to your feedback in the comments section of the YouTube channel or in the workshop. Um, this is Gomo signing out.